So it's a new year and uh, new possibilities and a new pint glass that my wife gave me for Christmas. And the beer that I'm enjoying in it today is this uh, Stone Angel Brewing Rock Beer. Rock Beer? I'm not sure. I'm not very good at uh, German at all. It's a Nuremberg style beer, red beer, that they brewed initially for Oktoberfest. A very nice German style beer too. So today, um, oh, earlier I was putting away a bunch of the bounty from December's month of mailbags and I noticed there's a few modules in my collection that I haven't really spent any time exploring yet. So today I'm going to pull one of them out and do just that. This one is a 16 channel analog multiplexer. So you can see on the left that it has 16 channels labeled channel 0 through channel 15. Um, on the right hand side we have uh, ground and VCC and enable pin uh, S0, 1, 2 and 3. Um, that is a select uh, 4-bit binary uh, input and we have the signal. Now a couple of interesting things about this um, basically it well uh, the first interesting thing I think is that it's bi-directional so you can put a signal in there and then give it 4-bit binary to select which channel connects to the signal. So you can have a signal coming in here and pick one of 16 outputs or you can have this as a measurement port and select from one of the 16 inputs and measure it. So the, uh, and it is an, it calls itself an analog multiplexer, which means it just connects these across. It's not, uh, it doesn't care what's there. It can be any analog voltage. It can be a waveform or it could be a, a digital, uh, just one or a zero, high or low. So the chip at the core of this is called the HP 4067. Um, and if you go Googling just for the uh, 4067 and multiplexer chip, so there's a CMOS version and a TTL version. I think we've got the CMOS one, which is a little bit, uh, which is a, has a little bit uh, wider range of voltages. Um, you can run VCC up to nine volts by the looks of this, which uh, which could be handy in certain applications. So there's the basic functional diagram of it. You got your not enable, so it's enabled when it's low, right? That's what the little bar is there. And then your four bits of control signal, and then the switching over here, which connects um, these guys to, or one of these guys to the, uh, to the output or input, depending on which way your signals are going. And there's the signal routing logic on the inside. If you, uh, I don't know if you wanted to make your own, I guess. And there is a quick truth table of what's going on. So with all four bits low, um, channel zero is connected. With all four bits high, channel 15 is connected. And then it just binary counts all the way through there. Very simple. So up earlier it said it could handle up to 11 volts without getting blown up. But uh, the typical voltages are closer to our Arduino-like levels. Uh, the supply voltage for the, um, this is the CMOS one. It can be anywhere between 2 and 5 volts. For the TTL one, between 4.5 and, and 5 volts, which is typical TTL. So here's some charts showing the typical on resistance versus uh, various possible VCCs with the uh, with the signal voltage so there is a certain amount of resistance like I said if you're if you're using it just to measure uh, voltages with a high uh, impedance source then that shouldn't be a problem if you're passing signals through it then you may experience a little bit of loss going through it depending on the impedance of your uh, of your circuit ah yeah this is this is useful too um, the leakage current is plus or one plus or minus 0.1 microamp, which is approximately nothing. Okay, here's the first setup. I've got uh, five volts in the power supply onto this breadboard. I've got five volts and ground connected up. I've got the enable here pulled low. Um, I've got the four, the first four um, 
channels, I guess, connect, you know, the first six channels connected to the, this little uh, six LED board and it's grounded there. Here's my four control bits and here is the signal wire. I'm just going to put the signal wire, well, first of all, let's turn this guy on, put the signal wire high, and right now it's kind of in an indeterminate state. It's not quite sure what to do, just because there's no data on those, but I'm going to pull them all low which should cause the first channel to go on. There we go. So that is channel zero on right now because these bits are all pulled low. I'll take uh, the first bit or the lowest, the least significant bit high. Let me go to the second one, take it back low, take the second bit. Ah, I should have done this with dip switches high right so right now we've got uh zero zero one zero on there we'll go to zero zero one one and it bounces up again and when those are floating those two leds aren't on simultaneously they're just bouncing between because it's at an indeterminate level and then we can go all the way up there we go zero one zero zero 0101, which is 6. Uh, the 6th one, anyway. No, uh, yeah, that is the 6th one, or number 5 on on here, depending on whether you're doing a 0 count or a 1 count. That was a little awkward, but there's the basics of it. So that's using this as an, or the, the uh, common one as an input right now. There it's at 0 volts, there it's at 5 volts. Um, so that's pretty basic. But of course you can also go the other direction. An application where this thing could come in really handy is if you've got a board that doesn't have enough analog inputs and you want to measure a bunch of analog things, such as this, uh, well, anything based on the ESP266. This happens to be a, an older version D1 before the D1 Mini happened. It's roughly in the same form factor as an Arduino Uno, um, which I could have used as well. But this really illustrates it because the entire ESP266 family only has a single analog input. So if you need to do analog things and Wi-Fi, you're going to run out of analog inputs real fast. So let's uh, wire this thing up so that it can measure a bunch of analog inputs on the ESP. Okay, here is the next uh, test setup. That took quite a bit of time to assemble all this, so I'm going to spare you all of this. But basically, we have the D1 uh, ESP8266 board over here. Here's the four bits coming out of it, and it's just cycling through them. You can see it happening there. Just binary counting from 00, 0 up to 1111, or 0000, 0000 up to 1111, and then pausing for a while. Those are all going across to here. I've still got the power, ground, and enable pin um, connected as before. The signal pin is connected over to the one and only analog, A0, on here. And then uh, 10, actually 11, of the uh, switched, in this case, inputs are connected over to these 10 pots, which are just set up between uh, plus 3.3 volts and ground. Uh, so they're voltage dividing, and the wipers are all coming across to here. Um, and... Everything on this side is being powered off my little 5 volt, my power supply, which is putting out 5 volts. 5 volts to power this guy, going through the breadboard power supply to create 3.3 volts for this. Why am I dropping it to 3.3 volts? Because the ESP826 is a 3.3 volt device, and I don't want to give it more than its maximum voltage as a signal input. Let's go take a peek at the code. These pots are all just set at random values right now. So if we take a look over here now, 
the serial port is registering the 16 channels of the thing and just reading it along and it's showing you the voltage off those voltage dividers whatever they're set to so I'm just gonna pause this for a second um, so looks like channel 0 is set to about half uh, several of these are set to three quarters except for this one is connected directly to my voltage supply why is it only showing 708 of volts oh that's why because I'm only getting 2.2 .2 volts out of my power supply okay so that explains that how much is actually getting across to the analog input then well I guess I'd have to uh, select a single a single one to uh, make this happen wouldn't I okay so I've just connected all of the uh, the select or all the uh, control inputs to zero which means I mean, channel zero is the only one that's measuring this one here so let's just check what that is right now that's 1.86 volts and the actual breadboard power supply is showing 2.3 volts because I don't have enough voltage going into it for reasons let's not get bogged down in that so if with my third hand let me just max this guy out here because I think that's max direction it's changed anyway uh, that's ground that's the voltage measured through there so that's 2.3 volts that is measuring through this guy and that's 2.3 volts there and if we look over here it's showing 765 I suppose we could do a little bit of math and get an actual voltage out of that do I care that much right now no it's just a voltage and if I change that pot so that's just winding it down winding it down you can actually see it change while it's measuring and again because I've got the select pins disconnected right now this is all just measuring that first pot bottom line it works it does what it's supposed to do and i'm happy about that that's pretty cool so this little test sketch that i wrote because i know somebody's going to ask me about it it's super simple super ugly um i just threw it together there's a lot more efficient ways of doing it but i think this shows it i basically got my four control bits uh, uh connected to these digital pins 12 13 14 and 15 on the D1, um, set them to outputs, analog zero, the only analog to input, serial monitor, because we need it. And then the loop is just this. I write four bits of binary out the hard way. I do a serial print with an analog read in it. I wait. I set the bits to the next one up, and I do it again. And I just do that 16 times. And then I delay for three seconds so I can read them, uh, scroll the screen along a little bit, and that's it. It's There's really nothing to it. Like I said, there's a lot more elegant ways I could have done this, but I think this just shows uh, exactly what's going on without burying it in a bunch of nested loops and uh, conditional statements and crap like that. Um, just the cheap brute force method. Okay, uh, here is my last i think my last test set up for for this just to demonstrate it and and play with it a little bit so i've got a couple of uh analog inputs going into the thing now i have my mp3 player going into uh channels the set the last two channels 14 and 15 just right and left or 15 and 16 if you're one counting whatever and i've got the uh this sine wave generator going into i think it's number seven and then the common, in this case an output, going through this little adapter into a powered speaker, just off to the right here. You may be able to hear it humming, right? Okay, so when I select uh, channel 16, or 15, uh, the top channel, uh, 1111, I get that. And when I select 0111, 
I get the tone. Which is annoying, but it proves the point. And this doesn't, this uh, sounds right. It sounds correct. Sounds completely reasonable. There's not really coloring the, the sound or anything. So this could be used as an audio input selector. Um, one of these for unbalanced audio, just like this is, or or any other you know, RCA connector based home audio, one per channel. Or if you want to do balanced audio switching, you could use a pair of these um, and essentially make yourself a routing switcher. That might be kind of cool. But I think the application that I'm most likely to use it for, at least initially, is for this one that I showed earlier, reading multiple analog sensors um, into an ESP8266 based device. I mean, if you were using some other small uh, thing like a DigiSpark or an ATtiny85 or whatever, uh, you could easily use it for that too. Uh, because, well, it's got, I think, what, three or four analog inputs. Um, but if you wanted to read a whole bunch with something tiny and cheap, then again, this would be a pretty good way of doing it. Have you played with one of these things? What kind of uh, stuff have you used it for? Or uh, what do you think I should try and use it for in the future? Um, initially, it's just going to go back into the collection and maybe in another month or so, I'll we'll dig through some boards that I haven't looked at and play with something else. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks for your, uh, thanks for watching as always. Um, and thanks again for any comments or questions you uh, may have about this thing. I'd like to discuss it. Talk to you later.